Flashcards are definitely useful when it comes to revising information because you've got active recall and space repetition. The question then becomes, do you use things like Anki, Quizlet, or potentially Notion? In my case, I use Notion because it allowed me to link my notes, my flashcards and topics and modules all together. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I created my flashcards database in Notion and how I linked it to my topics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a topics and flashcards database and I'm going to link them together with flashcards automatically appearing at the right time related to the topic, allowing you to have a topic count of flashcards. I do have a template which will be linked in the description below, which has lectures, tasks, flashcards all linked together. But for this video, I'm going to show you how to build this specific use. So we've got a topic database, which I've created, a flashcards database, which I've created, and I've added in a date property for the flashcard. And that's going to represent when either I added the flashcard or I got the flashcard wrong. Then I have a stage for the flashcard. So what stage of memory I have, whether it's I've just learned it being number one or I'm actually pretty good at this stage 10. Now you can add more stages on if you want to or you can have less stages, maybe one to three. The more stages you have, the more iterations of space repetition that then allows, which you'll see later on in the video. Now, what I'm doing is I'm relating my flashcards database to the topics database using a relation property. Now, I'm just going to add the relation property. And what this allows me to do later on, you'll see, is I can roll up the amount of flashcards I have due for the topic. So I can see how many cards I need to review for that topic for that day. So giving some dummy data, topic one, two, and three, these topics could be your modules. So for me, that's anatomy and physiology, biomechanics, pedagogy, psychology, all of those things would become topics. Then each of the flashcards I make would be related to the topic. Now a flashcard could quite simply be a short question and a short answer, or they could be a short question with a longer answer. Maybe list these five principles, or what are these 10 principles? What the flashcards represent is your understanding, your questions, how you choose to revise. For me, when I was building out my flashcard system, I would have 10 flashcards for the 10 different topics. Then as I learned the flashcards and I developed my understanding of the flashcards so the stage got to a certain point, maybe it was stage five, I then combined those flashcards together to make one bigger flashcard. So I, I, I basically took five small flashcards and make them into one bigger flashcard because I understood them. Now, once you've built out those two databases, what I would suggest doing is building some sort of template. Now, in my case, I had a topic template. So whenever I went into the topic, I could write down notes, which was actually a notes database, which you could see in the template that's in the description below. But when I'm in here, I can then add flashcards into this topic. Now, you could leave it as a table view, you could leave it narrow. For me personally, I would actually have it wide view. I would then put a column in, so I'll have a column of all the flashcards and the notes. Normally, my flashcards come from notes, so I'd have a block of text, and then I will turn some of that text into flashcards, the rest of it I'll leave there. Then I will self-reference the flashcards database. Now, because we're in the template, I'm going to go into the filter. I'm going to filter for topic and then I'm going to select new topic. So what I've done is I've selected the template page of the topics database. And this means it's going to self reference that database every time we click the template. So now if I go into topic one and I click on that template, that database is now going to reference topic one. So every flashcard that's related to topic one is the flashcard that is going to show. This also means whenever I create a flashcard in this space, it will automatically be related to topic one. So if I create a flashcard question answer, I've tabbed the answer across. So the answer text turns up inside of the page rather than the name. And then it's going to automatically relate itself. So now we have that flashcard in the flashcards database and self related to the topics database with the question being the title of the page and the answer being the content of the page. 
A couple of options that you could use to set up some of the flashcards data is you could make a template in the flashcards database and make sure that it's set to stage one. So whenever you access that template, so you go in, you make the flashcard, you cut the data, so you cut the answer out. You then push the template, it then puts stage one in. You could manually add that in, but for me, I would actually do this in the filtering stage inside the topics dashboard. These are different options that you could choose. It's up to you and your personal preference with your workflow. Something else to note is when we're revising flashcards, obviously the formula that I'm gonna show you in a minute that does the space repetition for you relies on a date property either the date being the first date that you added the task, uh, added the flashcard, or the date that you got it wrong. Now you can add that in manually, but for me, I just have it as a filter. So I filtered it for date is on or before today. And the reason I've done it on or before today is so that all of the flashcards I've previously made will show up, but when I add a flashcard in, it's going to put today's date in because that is the first metric that Notion is looking for when filtering for the information. So if I now go into topic two, you can see the new template has been put in. So we're going to add another flashcard, question, answer, remembering to tab the answer across so it goes into the data. I've alt dragged it across, so I've actually duplicated the text into the database. The self-reference filter is already there and it's added in today's date. Now, if we move that date back manually and go back into topic two, you can see that flashcard is still showing because the filter says on or before today. If we were to then create another flashcard, so question, answer, all drag it across into the database, it's now going to add today's date in because remember that is the first metric the filter is looking for. Is it today or before? So now we have three flashcards in there, one that was yesterday, one that was today, and one that doesn't have a date. Now, because we're going to add a formula in, what I'm going to do is put a date into that flashcard so that everything works. And I'm going to make sure that they all have stages. Now, I'm not going to be creating the formula here because that would just expand out the video, but I have done a video explaining how it's all made. I'll link it in the cards up here, but essentially it's looking for the stage that the card is at. So is stage one, two, three, four, etc., and adding the day on whatever I need. So if it's stage two, it will add one day. If it's stage three, it will add three days, etc., etc., all the way down. So as the stage goes up, it adds more days on to the date that you last got it wrong, which is where the space repetition comes in and it makes it all automatic. So all you need to do is change the stage when you get the answer right or wrong and the date will change automatically. When looking to roll that information up in the topics database, we actually need another formula. So what this formula is doing is looking to see whether the review date of the card is on or before today. So if I needed to review it yesterday or today, then it will be ticked. If I don't, then it won't be ticked. What this means is when I get a card today and I get it right, the review date will go to tomorrow and that tick box won't be ticked. So all I then need to do in the topics is just add up how many boxes are ticked. And in order to do that, we're gonna to go to the topics database, add in a roll-up property. Then I'm going to look at the flashcards relation, look at the due formula, and then just ask how many are checked. And because the relation is related to the topic, it's only going to count the cards that are related to the topic and the cards that are ticked. Just out of personal preference, when I'm viewing my cards, I don't like seeing it in a table view. So what I would actually do is create a linked database of my flashcards database, turn that into a gallery view, get rid of the page content, and then filter for that formula. So I can filter for the due checkbox and see if it's ticked. If it's ticked, show me the flashcard. If it isn't ticked, don't show me the flashcard. So I have an overall view looking at the topics database as how many flashcards I need to review per topic. And then I have my flashcards view and it will show me all the flashcards due. I could then filter those flashcards for the topics or for the lectures, however you've decided to sort your flashcards, your notes and your data. But again, that's the full flexibility of what Notion offers. If you're interested to hear more about how I use Notion, make sure you check out this video over here and I'll see you there.